thing that big agribusiness has asked them to do and told them to do. So that's the situation we face. They recommended long-term safety testing, the scientists. But the policymakers did not. In fact, when that document was sent up to a higher levels of political influence, someone from the Office of Management and Budget said, we should put a sentence in here which says, the foods created from these new methods are safer because it's a more precise method of creating foods. So as the, as the evaluation went up the political ladder, the foods got safer and safer. So what happens when you do submit these foods to long-term safety testing? I would like to know too. Do you know how many animal feeding studies have been done on genetically modified foods and published? Anyone? There's actually 10. Two were done independently, eight were done by industry, but several of those eight were commercial feeding studies. They weren't really safety studies. Now I'll tell you about industry-sponsored versus independently-sponsored studies. Aspartame, NutraSweet, it's created through genetic modification. It was responsible for 80% of complaints one year to the FDA about potential health side effects. Between 1985 and 1995, approximately 166 studies were done on aspartame, divided almost evenly between independently sponsored and company sponsored. 100% of the independently sponsored studies raised questions about aspartame. Some indicated the possibility of brain tumors. What percentage, by coincidence, of the company sponsored studies raised a question? Zero. So two of the 10 studies were independently done. Eight were done by industry. Let's talk about those two. Let's talk about one of those two. They were done by the same person, Dr. Arpad Pustai. Dr. Arpad Pustai, leading researcher in his field. It's a brand of protein called lectin. He had started, he was working at the leading nutritional laboratory in Europe. He was invited there 35 years or 37 years ago by a Nobel laureate to work in his laboratory and he had become the leader in his field. He had over 300 scientific studies done, about 12 books edited or written, and he was a money magnet for grant money because he was so thorough and uh, well thought of. And he won a grant over 27 competitors, which was the big biotech grant from the British government. They were to create the protocol for long-term safety testing, the long-awaited protocol. This was actually in the mid-90s. Nothing had been published at that point, so it was all new territory. But he was called in because he had done nutritional safety testing for years. And he was leading a 20-member team in three different institutions. And as part of their creating of the protocol, which was to be adopted by both the United Kingdom and also eventually by Europe, they created a genetically modified potato. The potato was genetically modified to produce an insecticide. Now let's back up here for just a second and talk about that aspect of crops that are registered as pesticides, because you eat them. There are certain corn that we eat that's genetically, modif genetically modified to produce an insecticide called Bt. Cotton also is genetically modified to produce Bt. We eat cottonseed oil. It's interesting that farmers have told me that when they give cows a choice, Cows reject genetically modified corn. Normally, cows will eat the corn to the end of the trough. Whatever's there, they'll continue eating till it's gone. The first farmer put in a trough, genetically modified on one side, conventional on the other. He let his 25 cows in, and they all congregated on one side of the trough and never ate the ones on the other side. When this was told to other farmers, they repeated this study over and over again with cows and hogs. Leaving, letting two or three into a pen at once, and they had two different troughs. The first one genetically modified corn, the second one conventional corn, and the same thing happened over and over and over again. They'd go up to the first trough, they'd smell it, maybe they'd taste it, they'd go to the next trough, they'd finish it off. They'd go back to this one, they'd smell it, and then they'd walk away. Geese avoided eating genetically modified Roundup Ready soybeans from a field. They only ate the conventional on the side of the field. Mice, no, rats were, were fed a tomato, and they didn't eat it. I think this is a great selling point. Are rats eating your tomatoes? Well, you can have this tomato which survives longer on your shelf, and rats reject it. 
Well, they force fed the rats. This was a study that was actually reviewed by the FDA. And they developed stomach lesions. Seven of 40 died within two weeks. They were replaced in the study. The tomatoes were approved. Anyway, that was an, let's get back to Arpad Pustai's potatoes. He was genetically engineering a potato to produce an insecticide. The insecticide was a, was a lectin. That was what he was an expert in. And this lectin he knew most about. He had studied it for six and a half years and was sure that it was harmless to humans and rats. So he was surprised to discover that the rats that were fed the genetically modified potato developed problems. But the rats that were fed the potato spiked with the selected insecticide did not develop the problems, nor did the rats who were just eating the potatoes. It was only those that were genetically modified to produce the lectin. So this is significant information. He had taken a gene from the snowdrop plant and put it into the potato to produce this protein, which was an insecticide. He knew the protein was safe. So why did his rats develop potentially precancerous cell growth in the intestines and stomach smaller brains, livers, and testicles, partial atrophy of the liver, damaged immune system. We're not exactly sure why, but we know it's probably the process of genetic modification, and not that specific lectin, right? It's not the specific lectin. I spend a lot of time in the first chapter of my book describing the events around Dr. Arpad Pustai, and I'll leave the good stuff for the read. But I'll tell you in short, he went public with his information, was fired from his job after 35 years, silenced with threats of a lawsuit, eventually invited to speak before parliament, got his data back and the gag order was lifted, and his study was published in The Lancet and remains the most in-depth animal feeding study ever done on genetically modified foods. I interviewed Dr. Arpad Pustai extensively, and I asked the question, what was the most shocking moment? What was the highest drama? Why, we, why was I asking that question? Because I was writing a book. <laughs> You'll see in the book that I write for drama and weave the science into it. No one's going to buy a textbook, and I wanted to appeal to a large number of people, so I had to write, as Laurie said earlier, the X-Files stories. I had to write about the bribery and the scientist who claims that a, that a Mexican government official threatened him, even implying we know where your children go to school, and how fictitious names created by PR companies created an entire internet sensation to attack in, in research that was incriminating against genetic engineering, and how threatening letters from Monsanto have shut down stories from TV and newspapers and books. So I write that for your entertainment. So I asked him what was the most shocking moment. And it wasn't being fired after 35 years. It wasn't the moment that he discovered the damage to the rats. I was banking on one of those too, but I would have lost the bet. Evidently, I was the only one that asked him that question, because he had been interviewed hundreds of times but never told this story. He said, months before this episode happened, his director, Professor James, walked into his office with a stack <coughs> of about 700 pages, put it on his desk. Arpad's wife, a senior scientist at the Rowett Institute, came in. The director said, this is the submissions from the biotechnology companies for their food, six or seven foods. The Minister of Agriculture wants a scientific opinion on these. He's meeting in Brussels with the other EU ministers. Now, Arpad Pustai looked at this man, and then looked at the stack, and looked back at the professor, and realized this man would never actually read these pages, but he was on the committee to approve the foods. And he also, Arpad also realized that most of the members of the 12-member committee were too busy. They weren't working scientists. They were on a lot of different committees. They were committee men. But Arpad and his wife had been spending the last two years evaluating and designing the appropriate protocol for safety testing for every variety before it was to be introduced to the market. So they were among the most qualified people on earth to review the stack of pages. They said, how much time do we have? The professor said, two and a half hours. When reading those studies, he went straight for the data and the design, because he, he didn't have a lot of time. He said, reading those studies was the most shocking moment. 
because he was appalled at how bad the science was, how poor